Hello guys and welcome to this quick tutorial. In this one I want to show you how to transform a 2D image into 3D without the needs to go into the Fusion's 3D system. Okay, let's get started. First off, let's create a new composition and go into the preferences and check that into the frame format all these boxes are set to 16-bit float or 32-bit float. I'm sticking with 16-bit because it's enough for what I'm doing and load our 2D image. Since this one is 1600 by 1960 I'm gonna add a letterbox to make into 1920 by 1080 and add a gamut node to set a linear workspace Let's go into the source space and I guess this one is sRGB and now in the viewer lot select the gamut view and add sRGB gamma. Okay, now that our linear workspace is set up, let's move on with our trick. So what we want to do is to add a displace node and pipe our image both into the background and the foreground of the displace and move into XY set X channel to Luma and Y channel to Luma and let's see what happens if I move the refraction okay, as you can see we're getting some kind of parallax but it's not exactly what we want in order to get some parallax we need to change the range of our pixels uh, from 0 to 1 to minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and we can do that by decreasing the X offset to minus 0 0.5 so now let's see what happens as you can see we, th we start to see some kind of parallax and what we can do now is add a blur node and connect it before the foreground and let's blur it a touch and now as you can see we have a nice kind of movement let's refine this one a little bit more and let's add a brightness contrast before the blur with an ellipse mask and let's do something like so What we want to do is to have all these parts to be white, completely white, so we lift it and maybe add also some gain. Since we are working in 16-bit float, our range is not um, clamped from 0 to 1, we can go beyond 1, so let's soften the edge a little bit and have a look what happens into the displace node now. And as you can see, we have a very nice parallax effect, which happens both on X and Y. As you can see, we have some edge warping here, but we're gonna fix that in a moment. Okay, set our comp to 100 frames and set a keyframe here and just add minus here and let's see what we have so as you can see we already we have a nice parallax effect let's add a twitch macro and let's use our twitch size offset to animate the scale so first off we want to get rid of that edge warping and maybe scale something like so maybe we can do something a little bit more obvious something like this yeah and since we have since we are using the twitch macro we can add a little bit of shakiness to the camera and maybe some angle so that we have a, a kind of natural 
camera shake. Move on to the next step and add a text node and connect it to the displays here. Let's choose a better font like this one and maybe change the color and the size like so. You can move to the letterbox and move the image a little bit and maybe make the size make the font a little bit bigger. Okay. As we would have. Now we, w we want to use the image itself to create some kind of occlusion and let's use the brightness contrast inside of our mask input. Let's move into the common tab of the merge node and select luminance. If we play with the low and high we end up with something really nice. Okay, so now, before moving on, I want to add a Kamut node. And I want to add back my Gamma. And now I want to add a Lens Flare to add some depth. So let's add an LF control. By the way, if you don't have the LF tools installed, you can go to Reactor and install LF tools just by clicking here. And feel free to support me while doing so. And animate our lens flare. Let's move to the beginning. Okay, let's add one keyframe here and one at the end. And as you can see, it will be good for all our animation. Okay, now let's add a LF glow. Let's see if randomizing we get some better results. Yeah, I like this one better. Okay, now we can add some chromatic aberration. Okay, something like that. Maybe just add a color corrector. and finish this one with a film grain. And maybe since it's something nice, let's add a aspect ratio and 2.35 is gonna be nice and there we have our result let's have a look okay 
as you can see we have a really nice result here uh, keep in mind that uh, this technique works uh, only on certain kind of images like the one that I use in uh, this example something else that I want to mention a few days ago I released a preset pack for the LF tools which you can find in the link in the description it's made of 16 beautiful lens flares you can also use code MiloLab20 for an additional 20% off until the 1st of November 2020. I think this is a wrap for me. I hope you like this one. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.